A huge underwater volcano has erupted near the deepest place on Earth. Breaking news? A massive underwater volcanic eruption has sent shockwaves through the planet, triggering a tsunami that struck the island nation of Tonga. Satellite footage reveals the scale of devastation, while a tsunami advisory has been issued for the entire U.S. West Coast and Alaska. This geological event, occurring near the Challenger Deep, the deepest point of the Mariana Trench, is unlike anything scientists have witnessed in modern history. How do underwater volcanoes work? For the most part, we don't know. More than 70% of all volcanic eruptions occur underwater, and scientists are in the dark when it comes to understanding underwater volcanoes. Because the eruptions are cloaked from view by thousands of feet of water. Here, a volcanic eruption of superheated magma, some 2,200 degrees Fahrenheit. From the west, Mata Volcano produces a bright flash of hot magma that is blown up into the water before settling back to the seafloor. The explosion throws ash and rock into the water, and molten lava glows below. This volcano is in the Pacific Ocean near Fiji, its top is nearly a mile below the ocean surface, 1,165 meters, 3,882 feet, and its base descends to nearly 2 miles, 3,000 meters, 9,842 feet deep. In any volcanic eruption, magma, molten rock beneath the Earth's surface, rises from the depths of the Earth to the surface of the land or the seafloor. The magma contains dissolved gases, which form bubbles as the pressure on the magma is reduced during its ascent. An explosive eruption occurs on land when these dissolved gases are released suddenly. Think of the bubbles in a Coke bottle spurting out when a shaken bottle is opened and the pressure is released all at once. But underwater, the magma still faces the crushing pressure of tons and tons of ocean water once it reaches the seafloor. The Havre volcano, stretching between 3,000 and 4,000 feet below sea level, experiences a pressure between 92 and 122 times that of sea level, which scientists suspect dampened its explosiveness and shaped the various types of lava formations. Not only does pressure change how lava forms, the interaction between the water and the cooling magma is completely different than when magma interacts with air. When water hits hot magma at 800 degrees Celsius, it vaporizes in an instant. Its rapid expansion into steam can be strong enough to break the lava apart. On the flip side, when magma comes in contact with water, the temperature change is so dramatic that the magma instantly solidifies in a process called quenching. Submarine volcanoes are found deep on the ocean floor. They can erupt just as violently as volcanoes found on dry land. Also known as seamounts, underwater mountains, submarine volcanoes can be just as violent and in some cases larger than those on land. Some oceanographers estimate that there may be as many as one million volcanoes on the Pacific Ocean floor alone roughly 750 times the number on dry land. Seamounts occur throughout the ocean, wherever magma rises to the seafloor and erupts. Lava or magma that has erupted and hardened then forms new seafloor material. The mid-ocean ridge volcanoes pour out considerably more lava than the rest of the Earth's volcanoes put together. A seamount that grows enough to break the surface of the ocean is called a volcanic island. The Hawaiian Islands are a prime example of such a phenomenon. In fact, just southeast of Hawaii, a young seamount called Loihi has grown to 3,300 feet, 1,000 meters, and it is estimated that it will reach the surface in approximately 50,000 years. The formation of new oceanic crust is not the only feature that seamounts produce. Where magma near the seafloor or erupted lava mixes with seawater, hot springs called hydrothermal vents are formed. Although these features are now known to be central to ocean processes, they were only discovered in 1979. Since then, 
Over 200 seafloor vent sites have been found. Scientists have now discovered that these plumes are of huge importance to the composition of the oceans. These hot springs support a unique ecosystem of microorganisms and animals that do not need sunlight to survive. Some 500 new species have been discovered, and because the DNA of organisms living around these plumes is very primitive, some scientists have suggested that such features may shed light on the origins of life on Earth. So underwater volcanoes and vents provide a hotbed of research in every sense of the word. The Mariana Trench, located in the western Pacific Ocean, is a geological wonder, stretching over 1,500 miles and plunging to depths of nearly 36,000 feet. At its deepest point, the Challenger Deep, pressures are so extreme they could instantly crush a human without specialized equipment. This remote and mysterious location has now become the epicenter of one of the most extraordinary geological events of our time. For decades, scientists have studied the trench for its unique hydrothermal vents, peculiar ecosystems, and unusual geological formations. Yet nothing could have prepared them for the explosive force of this eruption. The underwater volcano, previously unknown to researchers, has erupted with an intensity that has shocked even the most seasoned geologists. The eruption began with a series of deep sea earthquakes. Instruments on the Pacific Ocean floor detected unusual seismic activity, far deeper and more concentrated than usual. Initially thought to be a routine tectonic event, the activity intensified over several hours. Seismic waves reached magnitudes suggesting something monumental was unfolding. Monitoring stations recorded rapid changes in water temperature and chemical composition, clear indicators that magma was on the move. Then it happened. At a depth of over 20,000 feet, the seabed ruptured. Molten magma, superheated gases, and ash erupted into the ocean with a force that sent shockwaves across the Pacific. The plume of material reached several miles into the water column, and the explosion was so powerful, it registered on seismometers worldwide. Satellite images and sonar scans reveal a new landmass forming beneath the ocean surface. This proto-island is already altering the seafloor's topography. If the eruption continues, it could rise above the water to become a new volcanic island joining the ranks of formations like Iceland and Hawaii. The Mariana Trench is home to some of the most extreme and unique ecosystems on Earth. Organisms here have evolved to survive in complete darkness under immense pressure. The eruption has disrupted these ecosystems, burying hydrothermal vent communities under layers of ash and debris. While some species may face extinction, others could adapt in ways we cannot yet predict. At the same time, the cooled volcanic rock forms new habitats for marine life. Over time, these rocks could become colonized by corals, sponges, and other organisms, creating new ecosystems in the wake of destruction. This cycle of destruction and renewal underscores the resilience of life and the dynamic nature of our planet. A huge volcano hundreds of meters below the surface of the ocean has begun to erupt near the deepest point on Earth. According to foreign media, the Telegraph reports, Ahu Seamount, a large undersea volcano, lies about 137 meters deep in the Pacific Ocean under the northern Mariana Islands, which are more than 6,000 kilometers west of Honolulu, Hawaii. Satellite images show a blob on the ocean surface above Ahi, the U.S. Geological Survey said in a statement. But the remote area makes it difficult to confirm its activity. However, hydroacoustic sensors on Wake Island have detected signals consistent with activity from an underwater volcanic source, strongly suggesting that these are noises coming from Ahi, the underwater volcano is 200 kilometers from the Mariana Trench, the deepest oceanic trench on Earth. Matthew Haney, a research geophysicist at the 
Alaska Volcano Observatory told Newsweek. The trench is 10,994 meters below the surface of the ocean and is deeper than Mount Everest is high. The crescent-shaped gap in the Earth's crust is also 2,500 kilometers long and 69 kilometers wide. Trenches like this are formed when two tectonic plates collide. In the case of the Mariana Trench, the Pacific Plate collided with the much smaller Philippine Plate. As the media have pointed out, Telegraph reports the volcano could have started to erupt in mid-October, but again, the remoteness of the area has made it difficult to confirm, the USGS said in a statement. There are no monitoring stations nearby, meaning scientists are limited in their ability to assess volcanic activity. Researchers aren't sure if they'll be able to get close enough to the area to see what's going on, but they're continuing to closely monitor satellite images. Nothing is certain yet, but I have been involved in several emails where scientists from Inoue were discussing going to Ahi by ship to make observations such as bathymetry, sea or lake depth measurements, Haney said. Although the level of volcanic unrest is not certain, ships would like to avoid the area. It is not the first time that activity has been detected from there, as this has been observed in previous cases where the volcano came to life. The eruption's impact extends beyond the immediate area. The release of gases such as carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide has altered the ocean's chemistry. These changes could cascade through marine ecosystems affecting coral reefs, fisheries, and the food chain. Tsunami risks remain a critical concern. The scale of the eruption and its proximity to steep underwater slopes heighten fears of undersea landslides. If large volumes of material shift suddenly, they could displace enough water to create destructive waves threatening coastal communities across the Pacific Rim. A multinational scientific effort is underway to study the eruption. Research vessels equipped with advanced technology, such as remotely operated vehicles and underwater drones, are collecting samples and mapping the seafloor. Early findings reveal that the magma is unusually rich in rare earth elements, critical for modern technologies like smartphones and renewable energy systems. This discovery has sparked interest from the mining industry, but also raised ethical and environmental concerns. This event highlights the dynamic processes shaping our planet's interior. By studying the chemical composition of the magma, scientists can learn more about Earth's mantle and the tectonic forces driving volcanic activity. However, the eruption also underscores humanity's vulnerability to natural disasters. Despite our technological advances, we remain at the mercy of Earth's raw power. As research continues, the eruption near the Challenger Deep will likely yield new discoveries, each adding to our understanding of this unprecedented geological phenomenon. This event serves as a powerful reminder of the mysteries that lie beneath the ocean surface and the importance of studying and respecting the forces that shape our world. Recent observations are used to quantify the direct heating of the global ocean surface by submarine volcanism. These suggest a submarine magma budget substantially greater than the prevailing consensus. The average ocean heating effect is estimated at approximately 0.034 watts per square meter. This varies very significantly with the known variability of volcanic activity, whose long-term periodicities are also known to correlate strongly with the Milankovitch cycles, with the activity level close to the maximum during the interglacial optimum periods. The maximum emissions during the warm periods of the Ice Age cycles are estimated to be four to five times the average. In the 0.16 watts per square meter range, averaged across the entire Earth surface. The quantification is derived on the basis of total heat loss from magma to the ocean and is expressed in terms of energy and also as radiative forcing the average power per unit area as used by climate modelers. The approach used here 
created some simple and direct metrics, which may assist others to refine their better informed guesses. The consequences for the causes of interglacial events are also reviewed. The current consensus regarding the amount of volcanic emissions from volcanoes now and on average is clearly wrong. This requires updating using the better data geologists now have. Perhaps most interesting is the large and cyclic range of volcanic variability. The story of this eruption is far from over. It is a testament to the Earth's dynamic nature and a call to action for humanity to explore, understand, and protect the planet we share.